Hello, and welcome to Let's Play Master of Orion 2. I am playing this game in the shortest and most difficult manner that I know how, which is to play it on the impossible difficulty setting in a galaxy size that is small, with eight players. Go ahead and start at average tech level. Is it worth your while to go ahead and leap ahead by uh, giving yourself the build time averages by starting off primitively, perhaps? But uh, at least I know everyone's starting off on an equal footing with the average setting. Uh, okay, so I turn off the Antarans attack because in a small galaxy with eight players, it's far too difficult to defend yourself um, and survive because the Antarans overwhelmingly choose to attack the human player and it's too debilitating. I've decided to play as humans. Um, sometimes in these small galaxies you have a lot of contact and the humans will uh, have a lot of trade treaties that can be really beneficial. There's a lot of other attributes that the other races bring. Um, but this is kind of experimental for me. So I'm going to try to win this with the humans. So I'm going to try to win it through money and diplomacy. And then when I get an advantage, I'm going to stab people and take all their planets. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with red. Oh man, I'm really isolated here in the back corner. Um, Alright, so the first thing I do is immediately launch in search of colonies. Hopefully this solar system proves good and the Bullrathi don't go there. The Bullrathi tend to be antagonistic, so I don't look forward to being in close proximity to them. The Mentar, they'll make trades reasonably, and so maybe working with them will be okay. Uh, start off with the research lab. And so if I go to my home world, I can see they're building nothing. Let's start off with the colony base. Let's start off with the Hellcat. What we really need in a game like this is defense. So much defenses. Um, because it's already going to be competitive from the very beginning. So what I like to do is have nuclear missile ships available as a resource from the earliest get-go. I go ahead and divide them up, so depending on how many um, different ships and what class they are, at this primitive level, um, having different targetable options is, is a virtue. Uh, you can choose different targets because you have different missile banks. Otherwise, if you just load up all your missile banks into one weapon slot, they always have to fire at the same enemy. Alright, so I'm building the Hellcat first. What am I missing out on? I actually have a lovely solar system here, a tundra, an irradiated world, a poor world. All of these worlds will be great one day. Um, hopefully I can capture another solar system um, and hopefully if I'm not challenged by the Barathe immediately All right, the Cylons say they want peace when they have a tech advantage. They will take advantage of you Barathe They warn us, but they're not coming for our planets right now All right Oh jeez, sales is useless. I'm like trapped. If I can't get to this corner, I might not have a portal out. All right, so we gotta colonize this radiated world. We have no choice. If I got stuck in that corner, it would be a tomb. Thankfully though, by populating this radiated world, there's not a lot of competition. It's not like the old wrath are like, we want your radiated planet. Um, they don't want my radiant planet, so I am free, or I'm not free, I mean they're going to attack me no matter what I do, but I am somewhat isolated with my undesirable ugliness. 
All right, we'll start on a star base. But the reality is we'll switch to a research lab as soon as that is available. All right, back home at Seoul. We need some food. All right, this is a drag to do, but we need a freighter fleet before we need anything else. That'll enable my worlds to grow. We can go ahead and buy it, then let's do that. Since we bought it, let's go ahead and put the research here. Since we haven't actually built the freighter fleet, the food won't be around until the turn afterwards, so food shortage no matter what we do. Ah, we meet the Alkari. The galaxy offers a great many treasures, Emperor Sargon. It is our hope that we can share this vast amount of wealth and resources. Me too. Especially through the power of trade. So the Alkari have two planets, two solar systems. They might not be as ghetto as my own. I don't know. Alright, so now I have to generate food for my far-flung worlds. So my, uh, I always wonder myself, like, how soon can I begin trade negotiations? Especially because it's, you know, we're already bordering on each other. Let's go ahead and push it. I mean, we're humans. People will make trades with us. Apparently, they won't make trades yet. Am I so primitive we can't even make it? Maybe it's the Bullrathi who are primitive. Alright, so the Cylons enter a trade treaty with me. So I'm probably, I'm only losing 4 BC. That's pretty cheap. Eventually that'll totally redouble its value. Wait, he already accepted the trade treaty. Let's just leave it at that for now. Oh wait, the Bullrathi weren't even willing to talk. I have to be very careful with the bull wrath, he's so close. So I already built, so I'm working on a missile ship that will have some muscle behind it. I'm much more worried about my science, of course. Ah, a labor leader, but she's very cheap. That makes it worthwhile for now. Trillions. Oh, I wish I could negotiate with the Trillions. They always, they're always willing to make peace, and that will help me with um, my need as a human to uh, exploit the fact that these other races will negotiate on friendly terms with me. All right, how long would it take if there was another person dedicated? Seventeen or thirty-three. All right, we really need some missiles. It seems preposterous, but we seriously need weapons. Alright, let's see how far away we are from buying it. Let's see how much money I am already generating. I'm only short 80, so it's just a couple more turns. Having a destroyer will keep most of the enemy at bay for a long period of time now. Alright, now that we bought that, let's dedicate ourselves to science. Alright, with the Hellcat built, let's take it to Croth. Let's send one of these guys in search of other worlds. Tell me where you can visit. The Alkari. Emperor Tavua Preet thanks you for entering in such a fruitful trade agreement. You're welcome. Introduce me to the Trillarians, please. A research laboratory. Oh, yes. 
So this will generate five science units per research lab and then give a bonus per researcher that you have in your population. Um, it's very valuable because it generates science while you do nothing constantly. So um, now I'm going to research reinforced hull. It requires only 80 research points. It's among the cheapest things I can do. And a reinforced hull is necessary for the middle of the game when people develop gyro destabilizers that attack the hull of your ship itself. All right, so far I am pretty sa pretty satisfied with how this has been going. So let's go ahead and save it. Save. Call it episode one, and I'll talk to you guys later on episode two.